You see so many people speaking up in all kinds of different ways. The Occupy Wall Street movement is just one of them as it's going to really a worldwide protest. Washington facing a gridlock over both a budget and, of course, the jobs bill. And here at home, many folks like the Chosers either looking for work or worried about the fact that they may soon lose their job. So many people want to know just what will it take for the economy to recover? Well, we thought we'd try asking two men who might know this morning. They just won the Nobel Prize for Economics, and they are with us this morning. They may not have all the answers, but they definitely may have uh, more tools to give it a shot than we certainly would for you. Princeton University professor Christopher Sims and New York University economist Thomas Sargent, who's a visiting professor at Princeton. Gentlemen, good to have both of you with us this morning, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I you guys actually have quite a history together. As I understand it, you went to school together at one point. You've worked together in the past. You're teaching a class together. So we know that you work well together, so we're going to put those brains together first this morning. As so many people look at the economy nowadays, there really is both a short-term and a long-term uh, problem. I know you specialize in macroeconomics, but can you give us an idea, Thomas, maybe in the short term, what is something that could be done to give this economy a boost? Um. So I, that's, uh, that's a very difficult uh, question to answer. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty now, uh, both in Europe and the United States, about what future government policy is going to be. Um, and probably the best thing politicians can do is um, quickly reach compromises um, and have coherent plans going forward. Um, and there's a variety of ways that can be resolved. but. Um, Congress now is debating how big the United States government is going to be, how big the state's going to be. Um, sooner that's resolved, the better. So we need to have a little understanding, a little working together in Washington. A lot of Americans agree, uh, likely, that that would be a good way to go. Uh, Christopher, when you look at the long term, what are some of the steps that we could take now in this country to avoid a repeat of this situation? Well, the situation uh, came about uh, in part because we allowed the financial regulatory apparatus to uh, become uh, stale. It was in part uh, taken over by the people who were supposed to be regulated, um, and people were forgetting lessons of the past about the need for uh, regulation and monitoring uh, to be sure that uh, private interest didn't lead to system-wide weaknesses. So, so you um, think there needs to be more oversight? There needs to be more um, oversight. But then on the other hand, there's also the problem of the, I think the uncertainty about our long run government fiscal policies is, uh, is also a contributor to uh, financial instability. You see that in the way the stock market responds to every little bit of news about political developments in Europe. Um, and to um, things like the, um, the standoff over uh, the uh, debt limit in mm -hmm. the United States. <clears throat> uh, Thomas, is there, is there anything you can point to for the folks at home that you see as a positive moving forward? Well, actually, there's lots of positives. If you compare um, uh, what's happened with what could have happened, um, things could have been much worse. If you can, uh, so, so monetary authorities have, uh, have taken extraordinary efforts in the last two or three years, largely without help from the fiscal authorities, like the Congress and the, um, the administration setting taxes and expenditures. And they've, uh, unemployment's 9%. It's not 25% like it was when uh, Franklin Roosevelt took office. And um, under various scenarios, that could have happened to us. Well, we are happy that it didn't. Thomas Sargent, Christopher <laughs> Sims. The other bit of good news is that you are both now Nobel Prize winners. So that's a great way to wake up this morning. Thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks a lot. Thanks.